the harvest time. Okay, so good afternoon. Yes, it is a good day. I was looking for something. So you said, Deborah. Deborah said, Hi, Miss Genesis. I remember listening to a prayer of yours for finances, and my former landlord is paying me back. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. That is really good. Hallelujah to you, Lord. We just thank you um, for restoration. You have a testimony. Please share. Please share. You're amazing. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm glad somebody think that way about me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm always cracking jokes, right? But tell me the testimony, please. I want to hear. I want to hear the testimony. Before I start, so uh I'm just for warning y'all. I'm just for warning y'all. I ain't saying much, but um good afternoon. Thank you. I appreciate that so much, God's daughter. Who is my dentist? It just it's just called taking care of your teeth throughout your whole grown life. Cause I've been to several different dentists, so and you don't even know where I live. You know, you have to floss, water pick, you know, brush your teeth twice a day. Use mouthwash, you know, just basic stuff. Y'all be saying y'all got testimonies and then it take y'all so long to tell me. <laughs> oh my gosh. You said was waking in and out of your sleep for this notification. <laughs> I know that's right. You have a testimony. Thank you. Can you tell me? Somebody else said they had a testimony. I'm going to work on my teeth some more. Yeah, I mean, also too, so I do a uh, crest whitening strips. So the crest whitening strips actually work really good. So, but I'm going to tell you the crest whitening strips only work if you go to the dentist and like make sure your teeth is good. Because, you know, sometimes we need to get deep cleanings and stuff like that. So just make sure you're going to the dentist. But yeah, crest whitening strips like use the, the higher numbers. Okay, your last live I missed. I was at work. We'll be posted on YouTube. Um, yeah. Um. So. Wait, hold on. So. You said something about bills, but I don't see anything else. You said I have a testimony and then it says bills. <laughs> you said you wish your teeth looked like that. <laughs> My husband got a new job and he asked for more than the offer and got. Is that a testimony, Mahogany? I'm confused. 
Because I don't think, I don't know, maybe you did say that. I'm not sure. I'm out on an injury and they haven't been paying me. Oh, wow. Okay. Approved for more money. Oh, also after sewing. Okay. Okay. I sold on the minute. I sold into your ministry on the 12th and my husband got another increase. Wow. You told me that before. Wow. So that shows, this is like his second increase. That's amazing. Wow. So above the bills, I typed it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, good afternoon, Mercedes. Okay, so um, very good. It was somebody else who made a comment about um, they had a testimony, but they didn't say anything. I'm not really sure why. You say you wish your teeth was like mine? <laughs> yeah. Um, believe it or not, I want to get my teeth done. I want to actually get my teeth done. I feel like they could look better. You have a testimony. Okay. Um, telling y'all when you sow, God blesses. That's not true. Um, that's not true at all. The person that said telling y'all when you sow, God blesses. That is a lie from the pit of hell. I've sold into ministries. I've sold into people and I didn't get anything. You have to sow unto people that are called and ordained and true servants of Jesus Christ. So if you're going to get in here chatting, make sure you chat correctly. I want you to name me 10 people that you sold into and you reap this type of harvest because you're telling a lot of these people. All right. The first time I joined you live in December, you were talking about leaving ministries. Um, we are in. I'm sorry. Um, so, OK. So you said we needed to move and God already told me to leave the ministry. OK. Powerful, powerful, powerful. So God already told you. So when you came on the live, it was like a confirmation. That's good. Very, very good. Um, very good. So it was confirmation, definitely. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, you have to sow on fertile ground. You have to sow, you have to sow into, you know, ministries that are actually ordained by God. That's why I said that's not that's not really how that works. Now I've moved, I see abundance in all aspects. Amen. 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 Very good. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to get into the message today and the reason what colors did you dye your locks? I'm Yeah, it's a topic that we don't need to discuss. All right. So, you all ask a lot of just strange questions. It's so many women on social media with locks. So many people with lashes. I mean, y'all, I mean, come on now. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get into what I want to talk about today. Um, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, right? So today needs to flow the way I want it to, and what I mean by that is I don't be trying to be funny, but it's like I mean everybody on social media got locks. It's so many beautiful women on social media with locks and lashes, and I'm just I mean this is basic stuff, right? I don't know. It's like I come on here. Y'all act like y'all ain't never seen nobody with locks. With colored locks before. Everybody got locks. <laughs> Literally. Locks is like popping right now. <laughs> so, um, so you have a testimony. Thank you. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's, let's hear the testimony. Oh, I know your name too, Terry. Let's do that. You like my eyes. Appreciate it. Um, you spoke about the spirit of comparison. I'm on a heavy attack with that spirit. You you have to explain to me what you mean by that. Somebody said they have a testimony. So I'm going to wait today to get to the testimony. Um, today is really going to be about deliverance. Okay. I got a, when I tell y'all, I got such a powerful revelation yesterday, man. You said I sold into you and my $700 debt from the bank was canceled and they sent me back a $175 check. Wow. Now that doesn't happen. You had a debt. Now, now you the second person that's told me this. Somebody else on YouTube told me they sold. They actually owed the bank and the bank ended up giving them money. 
Very, very powerful. Um, I want you all to know, and I'm not even being funny, right? So I was in prayer this morning and God was just telling me the, so as I always speak on levels, so there are levels to your relationship with Christ. Okay. And so I'm stepping into a realm where I won't have to touch people for them to get healing. Uh, somebody told me they sold $25 and she said her husband ain't touched alcohol this entire week. Okay. And so I'm reaching into a realm where I won't have to touch people. You know how you have to lay hands on people. The supernatural like is going to increase. Okay. Um, I sold it to you and I feel closer to God more than ever before. That's good. But you have a lot of work to do. Um, Haley's Art Company, you have a lot of work to do. Um, you're in denial about a lot of things. Uh, are you married? Just out of curiosity, are you married? Um, so, and the reason why I'm saying this is because people are like, oh, you need to start a church. You are married. Yes. Yeah, so you're in denial about your marriage. I just want you to know because I heard that right. All right. That's why I asked you, were you married? But you are in denial about your marriage. You need to watch my teachings on self deliverance and you need to start fasting immediately. OK, and when God begins to work with you, truly, God is going to uproot everything that is not like God. God is going to uproot everything that is not like him. Listen to me. When God is working on you, he's going to deal with every aspect of your life. He's going to deal with your attitude. He's going to deal with the people that you commune with. He's even going to, he's even going to deal with the way you eat, which is why I decided to start eating very healthy because God was very convicted because of the way I was eating. God was telling me, you need to work out. You need to get to the gym. You need to work out. You need like, I'm, that's, this is the way God speaks. In order for you to do things for God, you need to be in top tier shape. So that's just the bottom line. So God is going to deal with every aspect of your life. And so if all the, a lot of y'all are in these horrible marriages and you're not doing anything about it and you want people to feel sorry for you and it just don't work like that. So you got to, we have to stop being in denial. You have to stop hiding and masking all of this turmoil that's going on in your life for real. It's very toxic and God does not operate like that. God is not going to just deal with one thing and not deal with a bunch of other other things. Stephanie, I'm so glad that you're on here. I did not get a chance to speak to you concerning what God
I'm a prophet and they told me this and they told me I'm that, right? But then they never, ever actually take any steps. They don't take any steps. They don't start reading the word of God. You know what I mean? Is your new YouTube name the same as? Yeah, it's, it's getting to know him. Yeah. So they don't do anything um, outside of going to church. OK. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of times with people, um, what we'll notice and I'm going to start muting a lot of people that talk too much. Because if you're on here and you're listening and you're constantly typing, I know you're not listening. I'm going to just mute you. <laughs> and that's just what I'm going to say about that. So when God tells you things about yourself, when God reveals things to you, for example, God tells you, hey, you're a seer, you're a this. It's your responsibility to start looking into what that means, right? So you need to cultivate that gift. How do you cultivate that gift? You cultivate that gift by spending time with God. You cultivate that gift by spending time in the word. You cultivate that gift by quoting scriptures that will help a seer. So if you're a seer, you should be quoting Ephesians 1 and 18 on a daily basis. You should be in Ephesians like bananas. You should be praying that your spiritual eyes and ears will open and enlighten at a greater degree. That's something that you should be doing daily. And the reason why I'm saying this is because see how people talking about I'm, I'm just going to start muting people. I'm going to start muting people and I'm not joking. All of these distractions and you're not even on here for the right reasons. And that's why I'm going to start muting you. Okay. I'm going to start mute. I'm going to start muting. Especially when I keep seeing your name, you constantly saying stuff. You, it's like, I don't know if you're looking for attention or what. Okay. So I'm going to get to the meat of my message. Now I'm going to give you all a backstory concerning what this is, what, where this came from. So yesterday I was in prayer. And God has been having me to intercede from, for somebody that don't even like me. But what else is new? God told me the other day, you've blessed people that curse you all the time, especially the people that follow your ministry. All right. So any event, I was praying for this person as I was praying for this person. Now, this person is in my age group, but this person is younger than me. OK, me and this person once was very close. We was real cool, etc. This person has a father. This person's father has cancer and is very sickly. God revealed to me. Um, I'm definitely going to mute you. Um, God revealed to me all of the things concerning this person. Now, when I say all of the things concerning this person, I mean the way this person has carried themselves how they've lived their life so god started telling me that this person is actually a womanizer now i'm not talking about the person i'm interceding for i'm talking about the person's dad god started telling me that this man because he was raised by his father so god started um god started revealing to me that um this person is a womanizer um Thank you for telling me that, Henry. I appreciate it. And um, what's your name, Tilbert? You said mute me. I blocked you. <laughs> How about that? Now, who else want to play with me? All right. So he started telling me that that person was a womanizer. He started telling me that that person actually destroyed homes. So he was he was destroying homes because he was sleeping with married women. God started telling me... Um, God started telling me that all of these things that he um, was doing, of course, was against God's will. He also was telling me that he highly rejected his own son. He highly rejected his own son. I'm going to say that one more time. He highly rejected his own son. God referred to him to me as a con artist. That's how God looks at him. You know what the Holy Spirit kept telling me? When I say the Holy Spirit want to get a message to me, he might say the same thing 10 times. Please don't nobody come in and say me too. Just be quiet. Please be quiet. I want y'all to hear what I'm about to say. So with that being said, God started repeating to me over and over and over again. He kept on saying, the way you live your life, is going to determine your outcome. I'm going to say that two more times. The way you live your life is going to determine your outcome. 
I'm going to say it one more time. The way you live your life is going to determine your outcome. So this is why he's battling cancer. This is why he's in the position that he's in. God said the way that you live is going to be how your life is going to end up. Okay. And so with that being said, this is why you have to take an account for the way that you live. This is why you have to be careful. A lot of you that are on here, your parents, as always, you know, I come with receipts. I don't come to play. I don't come to even, you know, it's always going to be on the straight and narrow. So I ask God to give me revelation concerning the people that are going to get on this live today and the things, the seeds that you all have sown. Because I want you all to understand, many of you have been following me for a very long time. I know you, a lot of y'all names. God gives me revelation when I'm praying, all kind of stuff. And your life is not progressing. Why is that? So I ask God to give me revelation concerning the seeds that many of you have sown that are going to be on this live. Okay? And the reason why I'm saying this is because... You all need to stop listening to me if you're not going to grow. It does you no good. It does you no good to keep listening to somebody week after week and you don't change. It does you no good to not reap the benefits of the goodness of God and you still, your account is still overdrawn. You still battling jealousy. You still watching me with envy, jealousy, hatred, and malice in your heart. It makes no sense. So these are some of the things that God revealed to me. These are the seeds that many of you have planted thus far. Now, when I call out all of this stuff, I want people to be honest. I want people to be honest. I don't want you to try eight hour fast because of me. I want you to do it because you want to draw closer to God. All I am is a vessel and a tool to give you tools that have helped me. But I want you to do an eight hour fast because you want to draw closer to God, not because of me. Seeds of discord, seeds of hatred, confusion, malice, seeds of unforgiveness, seeds of fear, procrastination. They don't study the word, word curses. They don't save money. Now, this is a this is this is a deep one. Extremely negligent parenting. Having kids with the wrong people, never praying over your kids, getting drunk and high in front of your kids, getting drunk and high in front of your kids. You are on here having sex when your kids are around. You are on here. Um, introducing your kids to a bunch of different people. You are on here. Yelling and cursing at your kids all the time. You are on here. Many of you don't even tell your kids you love them. Many of you don't even like speak life into your children. This is another thing. Um, I, I always step on toes. So this is another thing that God revealed to me. There are a lot of women who watch me. Okay. You and God, literally, this is the word that God told me. He said that there are women that watch you on Instagram, TikTok, like they study you. They study you more than they've studied the Bible. I, you said fear is me. What is this? Ayo, I shot, whatever. Yeah, it's more than just fear. You don't study the word of God the way you do. You don't fast the way you do. So you need to be saying way more than just fear. It's way deeper than fear. You spend a lot of time on social media. I'm hearing that clear as day. So let's, 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 let's get, let's keep it real on here. I want you to go and get off of uh, TikTok and I want you to Google what discord is. That's what I want you to do. School is in session. School is in session. That's what I want you all to do. You all need to stop being people watchers. You all need to stop watching me because 
the ones the uh, there's a lot of you that are on my Instagram and your intention is not good. You're not watching me because you are rooting for me to like lose weight and stuff like that. You're watching me because um of jealousy. You're watching me to judge me. That's why I do what I do on Instagram. You would never ever you you I want you to understand you would never move me. I'm going to wear what I want to wear and I'm going to do exactly what I want to do. And every week God is you're going to see God elevate me. Every week you're going to see people lives change. Every week you're going to see people testify. Continue to watch me with hatred and continue to see how your life will diminish and mine will increase in Jesus name. I think that you are extremely weird and bizarre to just watch somebody that you don't like. You're very bizarre to constantly watch me and you don't like me. God even told me a lot of the women that I've blocked, a lot of them, they are obsessed. They create new TikToks and they're still monitoring me. Some of them are on here now. They're on here now. You creating all these new TikToks after I block you. You see how much time you wasting? You should follow people that you like. You should follow people that you aspire to be like. That's what you should be doing. You should not be following me with judgment and criticism. It is, it's a very much a waste of time. Very much a waste of time. And it's really weird because God gives me all this revelation. But a lot of you all need to be honest. You do. You need to be honest with yourself. You need to be honest about the fact that you don't spend time in the word, that you're not seeking God's face the way that you should. You all need. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing all this stuff about procrastination. When are people going to be honest on here and say, I don't study the word of God the way I should. I don't fast the way that I should. I don't meditate on the word of God the way I should. A lot of y'all talking about procrastination and fear. Y'all need to go way deeper than that. You need to go way deeper than that. A lot of you jump on the internet before you not trying. It's a do. You, you don't try to read the Bible. You just do it. You set time aside for God. What if God said, I'm going to try to wake you up this morning? What if God said that? What if he said, I'm going to try to get you up this morning? I'm going to try to breathe life into you. What if he decided to do that? Because he actually could. You all need to, I'm telling you, some of the stuff, the way y'all look at God is crazy to me. I could never. He putting, he putting breath into your body. Ain't no trying, it's doing. And a lot of you all, you don't like correction. You don't like being told about yourself. A lot of you women on here, I want you women to come forth and talk about how you compare yourself. Talk about how you don't like how you look. Some of you don't even like how your nose, I'm hearing that clear as day, how your lips look. I'm hearing it. Why won't you be, why are you on here? And you won't be honest with yourself. This ain't constructive criticism. This is coming from the Holy Spirit. What are you talking about? What are we talking about here? This isn't constructive criticism. Please be honest with yourself. Please say, I don't like the way that I look. Start being honest with yourself. Start saying these things out loud, out of your mouth. Start saying, I compare myself to other women because I don't like how, because I don't like how I look. That's why you do that. Yeah, thank you. I don't like how I look. You don't believe that you fearfully and wonderfully made. You don't believe that you've been made in God's image. See, a lot of you all that criticize, that judge me and stuff, the ones, especially on Instagram, a lot of y'all need to move on and you need to get off social media in general and you need to go in a secret place because you have low self-esteem. That's why you have an issue with other beautiful, strong, anointed women because of how you see yourself. Period. Another woman, you should never be jealous of another woman. Period. You should never, it ain't even a woman. You shouldn't be jealous of people in general. When I see women that's bossed up, body bad, money, all of that, I'm like, huh, can we be friends? <laughs> 
I don't ever feel that way about another woman. I don't ever look at women in that way. That's that is sad. It really is. Who am I talking to on here? You a woman and you are on here. You don't even like how your nose look. Hold on. Anybody that say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I'm automatically going to block you because this is not that type of party. I'm telling these people that they don't love themselves. You said that's me. Sorry. So what do you mean, Cheryl? You said you're the person that I'm referring to about not liking your nose. Is that what you're saying? Why do you all have such a hard time communicating? Why don't, why do you all have such a hard time communicating? When that man don't answer the phone, you blow up his phone a million times. <laughs> okay. You say your nose is big and you say, yes, man. Okay. So th these are things that you need to go to God about. You need to go to God about this. If you don't like your weight, do something about it. If you don't like your weight, Jubilee, do something about it. Stop eating so much. Start drinking water. Get off social media and stop looking at everybody else and actually do something about your life. That's what you do. You make changes. You make adjustments. If, you're, if you don't like your weight, do something about your weight. Of course you do, Victoria. You look at women. You pick out their flaws. I don't like her arms. Oh, she did. She funny looking. She did. She did. Of course. That's what you do when you got low self-esteem. Because we should be uplifting other women. You should never be talking negatively about another woman. You should never be saying anything. You shouldn't be criticizing, judging. You, not, you should never do that. And why don't you like the way you look? See, these are things that you need to take back to God. These are things that you need to take back to God. If you don't like how you look, you won't be, you won't be comfortable around beautiful women. You're going to have an issue with that. Seriously, a woman that doesn't like how she looks is going to be very insecure around a secure, confident, beautiful woman. Period. You're not comfortable around anyone, not even at the gym. These are self-esteem issues. These are self-esteem issues. You have got to work on your self-esteem. You have got to work on your self-esteem. If you, because let me tell you something. Everybody is a work in progress. There's things that everybody can work on. You have got to work on yourself. I'm going to tell you all something. One of the things that everybody tells me is that you are so confident, right? I'm even documenting my journey as I'm losing weight. I'm posting myself. You think I care? Don't you know that it's people that know me from my past, I used to be very fit. I was very, very in shape. I looked very good. I just got overweight, okay? And do you know how, like, that could be gut-wrenching for somebody like, dang, she gained all of this weight. It doesn't bother me at all. People have thrown shots on me, and I seen, I caught the shade on Instagram. You think I care? Absolutely not. It doesn't matter. What the, the issue is, is that I never gave up. The fact that I still, I've still kept going. You should be like, wow, that's amazing. Everything she's been through and look at the strength that she has. But that's because people, um, um, that's because people are negative and they're trying to nitpick stuff because of the weight that I gained. That don't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. I could care less. I'm very confident. <laughs> very. <laughs> so that don't mean anything. You think I care? I caught the shade and I was like, okay. What do you mean deflecting? Who are you talking about? Who's deflecting? I started hearing so much compliments about my smile. Cause your strength comes from God. Um, You all can start with all these religious comments. Seriously. I, I just, I, I get so annoyed with it.
So, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I want you all to understand. See, this is why I wanted, well, some of you all who's following me, I thought it would inspire you to do the same. I thought it would give you inspiration to work on yourself. Obviously, that didn't work. Um, however, I don't care. But what I'm saying is, is that everybody is a work in progress. Everybody should be working on themselves. You should not be judging, criticizing anybody else. The words that I be getting about a lot of y'all that follow me on Instagram, um, it's always negative, lust, critical, judgmental, account always overdrawn, spirit of poverty. You shouldn't even be watching me on social media. You should be off social media. I was not on social media. I'm totally different. Let me not compare myself to you all. But I'm just saying a lot of the stuff that God tells me, you should not even be on social media. You shouldn't. You should limit yourself. But this is what happens when you don't have your stuff together and you worried about everybody else but yourself. See, that's what happens to people when they're judgmental, critical, and they're negative. They focus on everything but themselves. Literally. You do not want to be that person. You do not want to focus solely on other people. You want to focus on you. And so that's the reason why I say what I say to you all. I'm not joking when I say, um, you say you are inspiration. Thank you for the truth. Yeah. Well, it, it, unfortunately, there's not more people like me. I wish it was too. But you know what? I'm here, right? So we just got to focus on, you know what I'm saying? The ones that are doing the will of the Father, period. Yep. And so I, I say that to say this. All of these things that I said, and a lot of you still didn't comment. There's a lot of you that didn't comment. There's a bunch of you that was that you were very quiet. Okay. And that's another reason why I don't understand why you join if you're not going to be honest with yourself. Because the Bible teaches us that we are to confess our sins one to another. You say ever since you prayed for me, I haven't had another dream about car accidents. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's a testimony. Appreciate that. And I appreciate you saying that. Definitely, because the enemy wanted to cause you to be in a tragic car accident. Definitely. I'm even hearing many of you have had multiple sexual partners. Multiple sexual partners. That's what I'm hearing. Multiple sexual partners and you bring them around your uh, your kids. You said me. So that's one person. You said you have. That's another person. All right. So when you all are saying this stuff, are you actually repenting? Are you all repenting? Because you need to repent. Instead of saying me, you need to repent. You need to repent for being a negligent parent. You need to repent for showing your kids that it is okay to be with all these different people. You are setting a horrible example. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Repenting every day, Naya, doesn't work if you're going to do the same thing tomorrow. Repenting, you shouldn't be repenting every day. Repentance means to turn away and stop doing. So no, that's not how that works. I want you all to repent for being negligent and showing your children a poor example of a parent. Because your kids shouldn't see you with all these different partners. Should If you're not really serious about this person, number one, let me tell you all something. Because a lot of you all are dating. Well, actually having sex because these men ain't dating y'all. But the ones that are dating, the very few that are on here, why don't you learn how to be friends with these men? Do you know it's okay to be friends? Can you tell these men, can we be friends? Can we just laugh and talk on the phone and get to know each other? I'm giving y'all I'm giving y'all a million dollars worth of game, just like the podcast. I'm literally giving you a million dollars worth of game. You will actually save yourself a lot of headaches if you do this. Do you know that you need to be friends with a man before you date him? So you, the people that you're dating, you're probably not even compatible with. Y'all probably don't even laugh at the same type of jokes. It's, I'm serious. Learn how to be friends. Say, I want to just talk on the phone. I want to get to know you. Laugh and talk with the person. Go have coffee with the person. Go out to brunch with the person. Get to know people. I mean, man.
I didn't. So, Naya, you said you don't have kids. You know what? I'm going to mute you because you just ain't shut up. And I just don't understand why you keep talking. I, I don't. I know exactly what type of person you are. And I don't even I'm not even finna get into that. So mute. So and the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of you all you make too the decisions you make is too quick. OK, way too quick. This is convicting me. Very good. I'm glad. That's my prayer always that the Holy Spirit convicts you. My prayer is that you all look at yourselves. My prayer is that you look at within you. My prayer is that you look at your heart posture because you all are in no position to be judging and criticizing anybody that God sent. None of you are in any position. None of you. D Brown, you're not getting muted. You're getting blocked for playing with me. So just so we clear, I could play games too. They call block games. And my block list long and I love it. We don't we didn't ask you if you date. We didn't ask you. And see, this is what I mean when I say a lot of you all, you say unnecessary stuff. You really do. I'm specifically talking to people who are dating because a lot of you are on here. OK, a lot of you all say a lot of unnecessary things. OK, and so the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of you all need to take your time, take your time with people, get to know people, even just on a friendship level. It is very smart to be friends with a man before you date them. That is why I'm saying this. That is why I'm saying this. And this is another thing, too. You see how much you all comment? You see how much you comment? And it's funny because I have a family member who be on these lives and he was making a comment one day. He was commenting and stuff. And he was like, you know what? When you comment a lot, it's distracting. I'm like, exactly. He like, now I see why you be saying stuff. I'm like, exactly. Because if you're commenting so much, you're not paying attention. Which means why are you on here? You reading everybody else comment. You worry about what everybody else saying. I'm telling you all to repent. Why are you on here if you're not going to actually repent? You shouldn't be on here. Absolutely, the devil can send you dreams. Definitely. So, Miss... Dion, I read your comment and at first I wasn't going to. And you are looking for a pity party, but you're not going to get it over here. If you was friends with him for four years, then if he was messing with all these different women in those four years, you would have seen his character. So you are boo boo the fool for still marrying him. I don't feel sorry for you. If you was friends with him for four years, trust and believe that he showed you his true colors a bunch of times. Let's learn how to take accountability because I don't feel sorry for you. I'm telling people to use wisdom and that if you're going to date somebody, befriend them first. Because when you're friends with somebody, you get to learn a lot about them. You get to learn their patterns, their behavior, their character, just even see if you're compatible. Repent for lying. Yes, that's a good one. Because a lot of you all have a lying spirit. So that's good. A lot of you need to repent for lying. A lot of you need to repent for lying. So if you were friends with a man for four years and he showed you no signs, you can never say that because I know for a fact that's a lie. I know that. Okay. And you telling me I'm going overboard because you don't like to hear the truth. So you have to leave since I'm overboard. You overboard. You overboard for lying on my platform because you know for a fact you was friends with him for four years. He showed you all kind of signs. You was just thirsty. Bye. All right. So, yes, let's repent for all the lying. Definitely. A lot of people have a lying spirit. Yeah, the dude was overboard. Exactly. She's upset with me. I don't have time for that. If you're friends with somebody for four years, you get to know them. Trust me, you get to know them very well. So that's not true. There's a lot of women on here that need to repent for being negligent as parents, leaving your kids with people. Who am I talking to?
And somebody just asked me, you said you sold your last $11 a few days ago, the same day you received $1,200. Wow. So you sold $11 and you received $1,200? Man, that is amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, that is amazing, honestly. Somebody just asked me, why don't I accept DMs? And I actually just blocked that person. I don't know what planet some of y'all are from and the audacity that you have to think that I'm supposed to be answering DMs all day. I work a full-time job. I have a set of twins. I do a lot. The audacity of you to think that I'm going to be answering DMs all day. Are you out of your mind? You just immediately gone. You just got blocked. You said, I sold into you a couple of days later. My nephew gave me two brand new tires for my car. Hey, man. Talking about why don't I answer DMs? Now you're going to figure out why did you get blocked so quickly? I have a lot on my plate. A whole lot. It is actually sad. I actually, my ex-husband is extremely, um, my ex-husband is extremely sick. And a lot of stuff fell on me. A lot of stuff. I have a lot on my plate and the audacity that you all think some of y'all have is it's bananas. Yeah, I do. I give you all a lot. Thank you, D, for saying that. I do. I come on here regularly. I'm very consistent and it's like it's never enough. It just doesn't make sense to me. That's why I blocked that person. The audacity. That's what their name should be, the, the, your, the, the audacity of you to even say that. Yeah, the internet makes people feel too entitled. I don't like that. I don't answer DMs. I don't. I don't answer DMs at all, and I'm never going to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I give a lot of time. I give more time than, than people that have ministries, literally. I'm very consistent. I post content every single week. Like, it's crazy to me. It really is, you know, um, I want you all to take what I said very, very seriously. I want you all to reflect on every single thing that you sold last year. And that's what you're reaping now. So I hope that didn't go over your head. All the seeds that you sown last year, you're, you're reaping a harvest of that now. I hope y'all caught what I just said. I want you to reflect on everything that you. So we six months into the year. Listen to me. We six months. We only got six more months left in the um, in 2023. Can I ask you all, what are you going to do for God for the remainder of this year? What are you going to do for God for the remainder of this year? You said testimony update. The two jobs that I got off after sewing into your ministry, you got favor. Amen. I was decreeing that you got favor. So I'm assuming that they gave you a very good pay increase. Amen. That is very good. Very good. Amen. I see it. Definitely. Amen. 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 Um, it's also interesting, too. There is somebody on here. I'm not going to say your name, but you are a gentleman and you have sown it to me a few times. And so you see all of these testimonies of people that are testifying. But the amount that you have been sowing into my ministry, God has told you a different amount, but you don't do it out of dishonor. You also dishonor your parents. So there go your answer right there. That's why you haven't testified, sir. And I know you on here because you wondering like, man, I've sold into a few times. Why didn't I get blessed? That's your answer. That's disobedience too. If God tells you an amount to sow and God say, oh, I want to do, I want you to do 50 and then you do 20. Well, there you have it. So that's why you haven't testified. And you are on here. <laughs> So um, I say that to say this, you got six more months in the rest of this year. You all should take it very seriously. 
You should take it very seriously. You have six months of the, and, and, and this year's up. What are you going to do moving forward? Many of you have not even fasted at all this year. Who am I talking? Who's going to be honest on here and say, I haven't fasted this year? I have not spent, many of you have not consistently spent two weeks with God. Who am I? Yeah, me. Come on. I want to see all the me's. I want to see all the me's. Yeah, it's a ton of y'all. Etta. You know what, Etta? Your name popped up. I was waiting on you to say something because I was going to wait to see if you wasn't. I sold and I noticed my credit score has gone up. Definitely. A lot of people credit score shoots up after sewing it to my ministry. Most definitely. Amen for telling me. Amen. Um, yeah, a lot of you all. And, and you see how y'all names? Very familiar. Yeah. Yep. But I bet you y'all know y'all know Gunna new song on because it's viral on TikTok. Baby, y'all know everything. You know what I'm saying? But you don't know. You don't know nothing that God's saying, but you know everything that's going on in the world. I know you do. It's sad. It really is. You know about everybody else. I sold $17. My husband decided he wanted to let go of his anger and get closer to God the same week. Amen. 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 That is absolutely powerful. So um, a lot of you all need a, you have a lot of work to do. You have a lot of work to do. A lot of you have kids. Um, a lot of you have kids. I hate when y'all ask me, have I read certain books? Have you read the entire Bible? Okay, thank you. You said I repent for sowing the wrong amount. There you go. I love the fact that you decided to be honest because I was talking to you. Definitely. Because you've been trying to figure out why God ain't blessed you because you're dishonorable. That's why you haven't been blessed, sir. Thank you for being honest. Wow. God really working on you. <laughs> I, I appreciate you for being honest because you like trying to figure out why you haven't got blessed. That's why I sold, told you about the spiritual download and then was free from Jezebel, my husband. Wow. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You said you so funny without trying, just blunt and carefree. Definitely. Yeah. Since God told me to send you 50 and I got 500. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? God told you to send 50 and you got 500. You're getting triple. You're getting, that ain't even triple. What is that? I don't, I'm not good at math. Baby, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a whole lot. $50, you get 500. Come on now, it's obedience. It is obedience. You have to be obedient. If God say, hey, sow $100 and then you decide to sow 20, it's dishonor. Period. So I, I just wanted to say that because God, God placed it on my heart when I was on here um, as to why you have not been blessed because you've sown, but you are not sowing the amount that God is telling you to sow. So, yeah. I think it's important um, that you all understand so, Tatiana, you said you sold $50 and got $500 extra on your paycheck. That's wild. So, when did this happen? When did this happen? I'm just curious. The link to sell. So, I don't have a link. I have a cash app and a PayPal. It's getting to know him. And my name is Genesis Porter. So, I, But I don't have a link. You said I sold a couple of weeks ago in my house I had for sale. So thank you, Miss Genesis. I'm sorry and I repent. No, it is all good. I got a lot of love for you. I you're very young. I'm pretty sure you're like my son age. So and God revealed that to me when I was on here. So that's why I mentioned it. Because you should have gotten you should have gotten a breakthrough. But I'm letting you know the reason why you didn't get breakthrough. So now when God tells you to sow again, it would be wise to sow that amount so that you could get whatever it is that God has for you. Okay. You say you sold yesterday and I just seen the amount today. 
Amen. Amen. And you also have struggled with dishonor. Amen. I sold into your ministry and got really blessed. The next week was $645. You said I sold a small about. That's all. Sold a small amount. I got an unexpected check for my insurance company of $650 two weeks later. Um, Definitely. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So you sold... Um, you sold $50 and God gave you $500 on your paycheck. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. So, and this is the thing. Every time I get on here, God told me, um, how can you sell? My cash app and my PayPal is getting to know him. Genesis Porter. Cause there's somebody else on there. Um, um, there's somebody on there. Um, using my information. So, um, I'm going to take this, you, this, I say YouTube, this TikTok, I'm going to post this TikTok. I'm also going to post the other TikTok that I did the other day. You said you felt like I was speaking to you Monday. Did I say this Monday? Well, maybe God told me this Monday. Oh, wow. So maybe God did tell me this Monday and I probably, yeah. So he mentioned it today for sure. And when I seen he, your name popped up and then he said that you're trying to figure out why you're not getting blessed because you're not sowing the amount God told you. So, yeah. Um, but that's interesting. I said that Monday. <laughs> you said you sold the noise in your car was making went away and your credit score went up. Wow. Now, that's interesting because somebody has told me that before. Somebody sold like $75 and she said her car was making a weird noise. And she said the Holy Spirit told her to put so $75 into my ministry. She did. She said the car was like brand new. Um, my cash app and my PayPal is getting to know him. My name is Genesis Porter on there. Genesis Porter. Because somebody else has my information and using it on PayPal. I have a PayPal. Yeah. Okay. Well, you say you're in Canada. You don't use PayPal. Okay. Well, that's how you sell. All right. Um, I just told you, I said my cash app and my PayPal is getting to know him. Genesis Porter. But you said you don't use PayPal. So or cash app, I'm assuming. I do have a YouTube. It's getting to know him. That's it. Can I fast for my mother and her relationship? Absolutely. Um, um, you said, can I fast for my mother and her relationship? Are you saying your relationship with your mom, Maya? Because I just feel like I'm hearing that you need to repent. No, her relationship with someone else. How is your relationship with your mom? That's what I'm asking, Maya. Do you have a good relationship with your mother? You say you say yes and sometimes no. I don't understand. That's confusing. It's either you yes and no. Well, I'm going to tell you what I heard. Okay. I heard clear as day. You need to repent to your mother. You need to repent to God and you need to repent to your mom for things that you've done to her. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that you could think of a bunch of things that have happened, things that you've said to her, etc. Because as soon as I read your comment, that was what God told me. Yes. These are my real eyes. I wouldn't wear contacts. These don't look like contacts. You can tell when somebody has contacts. But yeah, I would suggest that you pray about that and ask God to give you revelation if you, you know, can't think of what to repair for. But I know for a fact I heard dishonor. Okay. Absolutely. P. 
parents should repent. Absolutely. I repented for, to my son about stuff I did. Absolutely. Many of you on here today need to repent to your kids. 1000%. 100%. Man, definitely. If you've done all this stuff, if you've had sex around your kid, bringing all these people, you need to repent to your kids. Tell your kids you're sorry for setting a poor example and that you're going to do better in Jesus name. I found you on PayPal. Yeah, I have a PayPal. It's uh, getting to know him. So definitely repent to your kids. 100%. Sit down and have a conversation with them. Talk to them about this stuff, right? What if your parents don't see that they are wrong? It doesn't matter. Do you know how many people I've apologized to and they don't think they wrong? They didn't even think that they did anything wrong. You apologizing and doing this for yourself, not for them. You're not doing it for their approval. You're doing it for yourself. So I just apologized to somebody very recently and they didn't apologize to me back. I wasn't even salty about it. Because I already know the person got a lot of growing to do. So. So and I and I and I say that with all sincerity, don't focus on people. Um, do not focus on people apologizing to you back. I'm I'm telling you, hey, hey, Sparkle, do not uh, don't focus on that. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because a lot of times when you apologize to people, they are not going to recipro reciprocate the same energy. Listen, I apologize to somebody on Instagram. Baby, when I tell you this fool went on a tantrum through all these subliminal digs at me and everything, I was like, oh, wow. I had to clutch my little pearls. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh, the shade is shading, baby. But it didn't bother me. And the reason why it didn't bother me is because I felt free when I apologized to this person and I didn't have no ill intentions. I didn't have no ill intentions, but God told me I still had resentment towards this person. So I repented to the person and the person was like, was not. Yeah, he yeah, he, he wasn't accepting what I said at all. So I'm like, OK, cool. <laughs> I've apologized to females. From years ago, some of them was cool. Like, listen, one time, let me tell y'all something. I wrote a letter to this lady. We used to live on the same block. I wrote a letter to the lady and apologized to her. We had got into an altercation and stuff like that. This was a long time ago. I, do you all know I had a dream? And I get, I don't know what made me do this, but I wrote her a letter and I just gave her a $100. I guess that was like me apologizing to her. Baby, I had a dream. And in the dream, she tore that $100 bill up. Like she tore it up. And then I woke up and I started praying. And God was telling me she was so angry that I apologized to her. Some people like it. They like stuff to stay toxic. Or they just don't want to accept your apology. Now, the reason why we got into it was actually her fault. It was actually her fault. You see what I'm saying? But see... This the thing with me. I ain't going to start no altercation, but I ain't ducking no action either. So if you want some smoke and we get into altercation, oh, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make you understand I'm not the one. So, but at the end of the day, I still felt bad because it turned into something that it, need, it didn't need to be. So I felt compelled to do so. And God actually told me to. She told that $100 bill up. I seen it in my dream, clear as day. She was real upset. And the reason why we got into it was because of her. The other person that I apologized to, the one I said was throwing shade on me on Instagram, it was because of that person. It wasn't even my fault. This person actually did me wrong. Okay? And so I say that to say, but that doesn't mean anything because you can still have all that resentment towards them. That resentment and that hatred and that bitterness, you do not want that in your heart. You want to release these people. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not going to lie. When I apologize to people, it makes me feel good. I feel better. I don't know about y'all, but when I apologize to people for things that I've done from the past, it's like a release. I feel better. I feel good. So... 
I, to me personally, I stop caring if the person don't apologize to me. I don't even care. I'm just, I'm going to do it. If God tell me to apologize to that person, I'm going to apologize with no issues. Yeah, exactly. You feel like a weight lift off you, honestly. Sometimes you can't apologize to the person, right? So if, if it's an issue where you can't apologize, you struggle with apologizing, especially first. Well, that's unforgiveness, unfortunately, because you shouldn't struggle with that. So if you struggle with that, it's because you have unforgiveness. You should not be struggling with apologizing to people. But a lot of people do struggle with apologizing. I'm going to be honest. I'm quick to apologize to somebody like, like that. I when when I was married to my um ex husband, like I would always be the one to initiate an apology, always. So it's a heart thing. It's really about your heart posture. Yeah, but I'm I'm not gonna lie. Since <laughs> being close to God has shown me how unforgiving people are. People really like if you do something to people, a lot of times they will not forgive you. I'm noticing that. Cause, baby, listen. The, the, the stuff that I apologize to some of these people for, you shouldn't even still be mad about that. That was so long ago. People still hold on to it. I'm very quick to forgive people and I'm quick to apologize. I'm, I'm being honest. I do not harbor unforgiveness, hatred, malice in my heart towards people. I don't. I just don't do it. You definitely going to block your blessings. 100%. 100%. You definitely will. Yeah. When I... When I was on Instagram and I apologized to that person, do you know I felt a weight lift off of me? It was interesting. It was like something lifted off of me when I apologized to that person. Even though that person did not accept my apology. And it's funny because they responded and told me that it was all love. Told me that, you know what I'm saying, they got genuine love for me. This is what the person told me. And then like a couple of days later, they throwing all type of subliminal digs. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, dang, okay, I thought we was going to be cool. I thought, you know what I'm saying? Guess not. <laughs> you still in your feelings. So, you know what I'm saying? But that person, oddly enough, this is the person that I have been praying for a lot. God has been telling me to intercede for this, this specific person I'm talking about. God has had me to intercede. This is the person that I was referring to concerning his father, Okay. So, you know, and, and that's the reason why I said, like, when you are a true servant of God, you can't really hate people. You can't have unforgiveness in your heart because God will make you pray for people that hate you. It says, bless those that curse you. You said they still wanted to shake the table. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. They did for real. Because, yeah, they wasn't. Yeah, I'm like, you know, when people throw subliminal digs, of course, you're going to catch it because a lot of people do that on Instagram. A lot of people like throw shade. You see what I'm saying? So see me, I'm not like that because if I got an issue with you, I'm going to call you on the phone. I'm going to text you. I'm going to tell you to your face. I'm never going to throw subliminal digs. I don't believe in that. I'm too old to be doing that. If me and you got an issue, you going to know it because I'm going to tell you to your face. If I'm not happy about something. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so, but yeah, he did. That person definitely wanted to shake some tables because uh, they weren't having it. But you have to get to a place in your life where you can pray for your enemies because God wants all of you there. You have to get to a position where you can pray for your enemies. I told you all that I had a lot of issues and stuff with people um, living on my block, a specific group of people living on my block. Um, you know what God told me? See, here's the thing, and, and I want to just say this. You do not have to have hatred. Um, it, no, I'm sorry. You don't have to, you don't need to seek revenge. That's what I'm trying to say. You never have to seek revenge because I'm going to tell you something that I say all the time. You reap what you sow. Okay. If you a troublemaker, if you a liar, if you a gossiper, if you all of those things, you're going to reap a full harvest of that. Let me tell you something. You know, people like to say the universe and all of that. But no, you reap what you sow. You really do. If you are a gossiping friend, that's why your friends gossip about you. If you and you attract, you attract what's on you, period. 
So if a lot of you have been asking God to send you good friendships, make sure you're not a gossiper. Make sure that you're a good friend and you know what that actually means, right? So I just want to say that to many of you because a lot of you are seeking God for friendships. You want friendships, but you're not a good friend. Ask yourself, would you want to, would you be comfortable with being a friend with yourself? How, how you act? Think about that. Why would God send you good friendships if you gossip real bad? Why would God send you good friendships if you're very jealous hearted? What if your friend has a lot of money? What if she's very pretty? You're going to be jealous and hating on her behind her back. That's not good. You see what I'm saying? So you got to check your heart. So you will reap what you sow. So God had me to pray for this specific person because God was telling me that this person was actually suicidal. The, the spirits that are on this person is bananas, right? You said after you prophesied to me and had us quote Psalms 5110, you said you saw your molester and you forgave him. Wow, that is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. The fact that you was able to forgive a person that touched you in such a man, that is amazing. Wow. That's a testimony. Wow. That is really powerful. Yeah, that is very powerful. You say you got a check in your spirit that you were supposed to send 50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I tell. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you when you listen to God, I'm telling you, there's a reward that comes from that. Because God definitely wants to bless you. Wow, that is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. I'm not going to lie. That is a big step. To be able to forgive somebody that touched you and violated you, that is absolutely amazing. Mm. Wow. So, wait a minute. You said I have a small testimony already regarding my son. So, yeah, I think I need to switch locations. My environment has a hold on me. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as I read that, God said it definitely does, Terry. So, yeah, that's something you should look into for sure. Yeah, definitely. And your location, the, all those things do matter too. That's some, So, that's another thing that God revealed to me. But this is like my personal testimony. Your, like the location and where you live, it does matter for sure. <laughs> So being rejected by my family and I had a dream of my sister trying to stab me last night. Well, that's because, all right, it's the same thing with me. I had a dream about my sisters, I want to say not even two weeks ago. And my sisters were ganging up on me. They were cursing me out. They were telling me F you in the dream because I had been interceding for my sisters. And so God revealed to me that my sisters will never accept my calling because my sisters do not want to serve Jesus Christ. So God is revealing to you that your family is um, their enemies. OK, they are enemies to you. So what you have to understand is that the people that serve God, those that's your family. That's what Jesus said in the Bible. OK. I could pull it up, too, <laughs> but that's your family, the people that serve Christ. And what you need to do is intercede for your family. And what you also need to do is ask God to send the right people to you. OK, ask God to send the right people to you. I guarantee you he will start doing it in, in, in due season. OK, but you seeing them stabbing you, that's because that is what they're doing to you in the natural speaking real negatively of you, um, talking real ill of you. Very jealous. It just it is what it is. Yeah. 
So um, I think I think it's important to take your dreams very, very seriously because there's a lot of revelation that comes with that. Everybody wants to connect with their family. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, it's not always the case, you know, and I saw that firsthand in my family, you know, so it's unfortunate. But, it, you know, you have to. Yeah. So anybody that serves God, um, that is your family. So, and that's something that Jesus said. So you all have to, you, you have to understand that, um, people that serve God, people that are close to God, true servants of Jesus Christ. Those are the people that you want to gravitate to. You don't want to gravitate to people that are acting worldly, crazy, gossiping. You all, I did not ask any of you to pull up the scripture. I didn't. I didn't because it's just, you know, you all, you all, you be so quick to try to like say stuff and then lives be ter terrible. All right. But what I want you to take into consideration is the goodness of God. I know you don't look at it like that, but look at how, how good God is, how he revealed that to you, right? He's showing you who your family really is. I know that don't sound good and it don't sound pleasing to your ear, but I want you to understand God is so revealing. He reveals the truth. Um, Hold on. Let me get you out of here telling me what not to do. He's so he is. He's very, very faithful. Um, and, and I think it's extremely important that you look at it from that perspective. Um, and the reason why is. Why would he say she finna block you? Y'all just be I, I just feel like y'all do so much. In these comments. And you so distracted. It wasn't even a reason for Andrew to even say. She finna block you. I don't understand that. How do y'all be tagging people so quickly? I just. I don't get it. But you got such a hard time reading the word. You have a hard time fasting. You have a hard time doing everything else. I don't understand it. But y'all be in these comments like scholars. <laughs> like it just. It's, it's baffling to me. Um, and so I say that to say, I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. It is not easy at all, but you have to look at it as God showing you who these people are. Okay. And so you need to distance yourself from your family because there's a void that God wants to fill because, um, I even feel as if God is saying that you're very sad because of the situation with your family rejecting you. Right. You don't want to hold on to the spirit of rejection. You want to release them. You want to love them from a distance. And wish them well. Seriously. Because I'm going to be honest, some people just they're never going to give their life to God. They're never going to. And I've said this many a times on here. I'm like, you all do know that everybody does not have a desire to serve God. Everybody does not have a desire to serve God. Even it's even in the Bible, because I know a lot of religious people don't like this, but it literally says in the Bible, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy on. God does not have mercy on everybody. And I know you don't want to hear it, but it's in Romans. Oh, yes, it's in Romans. So I just wanted to leave that there. Everybody does not want to serve God. Everybody don't want to fully submit to God. Everybody does not want to live a life pleasing to God. Definitely, Tatiana. Most definitely. Most definitely. Because if you read the Bible, a lot of people in the Bible were placed in toxic environments. Look at Joseph's life. Joseph's family sold him into slavery. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a part of your, so the toxic family and the toxic situations, it's a part of your testimony. 100%. I grew up in a household with a warlock. That's bananas. Who physically, verbally abused my mother. He called us every name but a child of God. I got called B-I-T-C-H so much when I was a kid, it wasn't even funny. He called us. He used to call me HOEs, all kind of stuff. I was 10, 11 years old. That man disrespected us to the hundredth power. So, 
So, you know, and I say that to say all of that is a part of, of, of uh, your testimony, 100%. He places us in very toxic environments. It's very unfortunate. But you know what? It's a lot of stuff that when you read the Bible was very unfortunate. It was very unfortunate what happened to Job because God allowed the devil to pretty much do what he wanted with Job. Think about that. See, I, a lot of us, we get a devil a lot of credit, but God is the one who's in control. So in the book of John, I don't know if you all are familiar with the book of John. It is a very powerful book. There is a passage of scripture where there was a man who um, Jesus had went to this place. These people had been, this man had been blind for 38 years. Hear what I'm about to say. He was blind for 38 years and the apostles, or oh, I don't know if it was the Pharisees, but they were asking him about the man. Do you know Jesus had basically said that God allowed him to be blind just for that testimony? So God will allow you to be messed up and jacked up for a long time just for a testimony. It's in John. And so I say that to say, yes, God puts us in the trenches. <laughs> Ain't no way else of putting it. He puts us in the trenches and you need to come out. You know what I'm saying? And the only way you're going to come out is by your faith in God. The only way you're going to come out is by spending time with God. The only way you're going to come out is by fasting, meditating on the word of God and being obedient to him. That is how you're going to come out. It's unfortunate. So... Yeah, it's in, it's in John. It's in John. It's a very powerful. John is very powerful. Very powerful. <sighs> so um, I'm going to let you all go because I have to. Um, I have some work and stuff to do. I have a lot of other things I need to do today. Um, you are very welcome. I love you all. Thank you for the testimonies. Um he teaches us during the trials, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And Sparkle, I'm going to be praying for your strength. I'm going to be praying for your strength. Because I just feel like I'm hearing like depression on you. I'm definitely going to be praying for you. Um, I love you too, Crystal. So I love you all. You all are, what you say, I'm about to go try to unbig my back. <laughs> you say you better go unbig your back. Yeah, make sure you want big your plate too, sis. You got to unbig your plate. If you going to big your black, you got to unbig the plate. Both of them got to go. <laughs> all right, so I love you all. You all be blessed, be encouraged. In Jesus' name, we will talk very, very soon.